Hey, what's up everyone? How's it going? This is Watch. Hope you guys are all doing well. And what you're looking at right now is arguably two of the best wireless gaming mice that you can get right now. We're talking about the brand new Logitech G900 Chaos Spectrum and the latest version of the Razer Mamba Chroma Edition. Now, what we're going to do is basically go through the ins and outs of what makes these two gaming mice special. And hopefully we can determine which one is going to be best suited for your personal gaming needs. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. Now, first things first, both of these gaming mice promise to deliver the performance and latency that you get from a wired a professional gaming mouse in a wireless package. Both use a highly optimized 2.4 gigahertz wireless bandwidth to deliver a latency and lag that's less than one milliseconds or equivalent to what you would get on a high-end wired gaming mouse. And in terms of actual real-life latency tests, I didn't really see any difference between both of them. I'm not a professional gamer, but... I can definitely notice when a mouse has significant amount of latency and uh, certainly the first generation of wireless gaming mouse were definitely not up there. But at this point of the game, uh, you can definitely feel very confident that both of these are going to deliver very reliable wireless uh, signal throughput and you're never going to get really hung up in any circumstances, even when the battery gets a little bit low. Now, the G900 is using the PMW3366 sensor found on the G502 Proteus, which which has a sensitivity range for anywhere between 200 to 12,000 dpi with zero acceleration or smoothing. Now on the Razer side, the Mambo is using a very advanced laser sensor that has an astonishing dpi rating of up to 16,000 uh, dpi or cpi, which is pretty darn incredible. And again, I'm not really a big high sensitivity uh, gamer. I typically play anywhere between 1,500 to 6,000 dpi. It's nice. To to know that a mouse is capable of having a really high sensitivity and it basically means that the sensor inside is a lot higher in terms of resolution and overall dot count which is going to definitely help out some of you guys out there that like to really use crazy high sensitivity but more importantly uh, both of these mice track extremely well on a, a variety of different services and obviously if you have a nice quality mouse pad you're going to find that the tracking and consistency of the imaging sensors on both platforms are very good. You're not going to really have any kind of complaints, uh, generally speaking. Uh, most of your complaints are going to be based on the ergonomics, based on the style of a gamer you are, and the kind of grip that you like to employ. Now, the cool thing about the G900 is that it's a fully ambidextrous mouse, so you can use it if you're a left and right-handed user, and you can even swap out the uh, different uh, side buttons to match uh, your specific hand orientation as well, which is definitely really cool and adds a level of customization, which is not found on the Razer, which is using mostly that Death Adder style design that Razer has been using for so many years, and a lot of people love this design. I personally think it's very, very ergonomically friendly. It's especially if you like to palm a grip your mouse. Uh, you can obviously do a claw or fingertip position as well, and it really does melt into your hand. The shape is very comfortable to use, especially for a prolonged period of time. And if I had to say which one was more comfortable for me personally, based on my hands and my gaming style, I would pretty much say that I like the Mamba a little bit better than the G900. But in terms of actual weight, the G900 is significantly lighter, measuring only about 107 grams versus the Mamba weighs about 120 five grams and if you personally feel that a lighter gaming mouse will give you some sort of competitive edge that might be an advantage for you for me personally i don't mind the slight weight difference on the mambo side now in terms of buttons and overall button configurations in terms of the amount of buttons you have on the g900 you have 11 fully programmable buttons versus on the razor you have nine fully programmable buttons and in terms of ease of use and button placement both are actually very good based on their independent design and once you get used to the form and function of what each mouse has to present you're going to find that hitting the right buttons at the right time is not going to be much of a challenge on both ends. Now in terms of the primary left right click buttons the Logitech G900 actually employs a brand new mechanical pivot key design which actually employs a spring tensioning system which doesn't actually bend the plastic like you find in traditional gaming mice such as the Mamba. Instead the whole entire click button gets pressed down onto the mechanical switch 
much like a mechanical keyboard. And with this system, the uh, pre-travel distance between uh, the button and the switches gets reduced significantly, thereby giving you a more precise click action and also uh, less deviation in terms of the amount of force needed to actuate a click. On the other side, even though the Razer Mamba is using a more traditional uh, click button, there's actually some adjustability in terms of the amount of force uh, controlled by each left and right click. You can see that at the bottom of the mouse, there's actually two adjustable screw heads, which allows you to individually tune both your left and right click buttons for either a more travel distance or less travel distance, depending upon what kind of gaming style you're going to employ. So if you like to use a little amount of force to do some quick fire actions, you can set up the mouse for that. Or if you want to apply a little bit more force and get a little bit more travel out of your actuation distance, you can tune the mouse for that specifically, which some RTS and RPG gamers like to use. Again, it just depends upon your personal needs. And it's nice to know that you have that added level of customization for the amount of force that you can apply on each left and right click. Now, I'll just give you guys a quick little audio sample of what the actual clicking sound feels like on both mice. Now, both mice have uh, two individual RGB lighting zones. On the Mamba, you have these continuous uh, light beams on the side of the mouse, and there's also RGB lighting on the dock, which is included, and uh, you can basically synchronize uh, the uh, color combinations of both uh, the uh, dock and the mouse itself to give added effect, or you can choose from 16.8 million colors. There's also a lighting zone on the scroll wheel, like we find on the Logitech side, which also has uh, a lighting zone on the Logitech logo. Now, the last thing we're going to talk about is the overall battery life. Now, both are not stellar in terms of battery performance, but they'll give you more than enough time, and most likely you're going to be charging these mice on a consistent basis, but I did an independent test on uh, basically using the mice on a consistent basis to see what the average battery life was after a couple of discharge cycles. Now, on the Logitech, basically on a full charge, you're pretty much guaranteed 34 hours. Now, uh, based on my testing, which is a little bit of gaming and a lot of of just general computing uh, that's definitely pretty good on the uh, Mamba using similar kind of overall uh, tasks uh, including uh, the same type of gaming applications and doing the same type of work I got equivalent about 22 hours now uh, that's definitely a lot lower than what the Logitech has to offer which is kind of upsetting but perhaps is a little more more of a power hungry mouse now in both situations you can actually uh, plug in the micro USB connection and be connected and charging at the same time. The nice thing about the Mamba is you do have the included uh, charging dock which gives the mouse a area to live when it, you're not actually using it and it's charging at the same time. But inevitably uh, battery life is uh, pretty darn important in a wireless gaming mouse. That's one of the biggest things about having a wireless solution is you don't have to deal with any wires. And in this scenario the Logitech is the superior solution. It's significantly getting better battery life and that might sway a person to choose uh, that mouse over the razor but uh, again it's going to come down to your personal needs and preferences hopefully this video gave you a little bit of information to guide you guys in the right direction if you're in uh, the market for a wireless gaming mouse uh, hopefully this video helped you out and check out the description down below for more detailed information about each product but really on that guys that's really it give us a thumbs up if you like this video thank you so much for watching thanks so much for your support again and we'll see you later take care